Alright, so this PowerPoint is going to be about uh, troubleshooting reproduction failure, uh, particularly in sows. We're not really fo focusing on boars at all, mostly sows and gills. So, we're going to talk about the main, the most common, I guess, uh, things that can go wrong and affect reproductive failure in the environment and just in your herd, basically. It's not a concluded list, there's many other things, but this is the most popular things, I guess. So, viruses, uh, it's a pretty popular one, actually, just because people don't keep up with sow vaccinations. Usually you vaccinate your baby pigs and then they just go on, you don't vaccinate anymore. So, you wanna make sure you have a proper vaccine protocol for your farm, um, dependent on you know, your program, the amount of sows you're running, the region you live in. Uh, these are just some basic vaccines or viruses you should vaccinate for. I know the Purdue farm actually uh, had a leftover virus that was out at the farm and they weren't vaccinated for that particular strand. So you definitely wanna watch for that if you're having a you know, low conception, you might wanna look into that and talk to your veterinarian about how to, you know, find that out on a good, uh, protocol. So another thing is you want to make sure you keep a good record system. So as you keep sows around for you know six years, you want to make sure they are up to date and you know the vaccines they've had. So, so semen quality, another uh, big thing. You want to make sure the semen you're buying, the semen you're collecting off your farm or the boar you're using has good semen, viable semen, um, it's not lo a low count or anything, so you need to routinely check the semen coming on the farm and, and the boars you are using, if you're using on-farm boars. Um, you can use a microscope, it's pretty easy. Just warm it up, put it under a microscope, you can check the viability and the quality of semen, make sure that it's a lot of semen, make sure you know it's moving. This picture kind of shows <coughs> some semen like this is kind of, you want it moving forward, not doing some abnormal movements, not circling, you just want to kind of keep it in a straight line. Uh, you obviously don't want abnormal looking sperm, kind of shown in this picture. And then you, you need to get used to what a normal sperm count is versus a low sperm count. So yeah, make sure before you purchase or use a herd board, check a semen, have semen quality check. If you can't do it, have your vet do it have someone that you know knows how to do it because it will cause a huge problem with your reproduction percentage. So yeah, always consult with your veterinarian if you're concerned with the semen quality. Weather. Um, weather, there's, you know, depending on what climate you're in, extreme heat or extreme cold will affect reproduction. Um, it also depends on what kind of housing system you're running. If your sows are in, you know, a nice barn that's got heat, it's got cooling, it's got good ventilation, then there's not a lot to be concerned as long as you keep them at a, a comfortable temperature. But if you have them outside in buildings, you know, like maybe just in sow lots, gilt lots, or in hoop buildings, you're going to have to watch the temperature, make sure you have adequate ventilation. If you need insulation, you want to make sure the bedding for warmth, cooling pads, um, or a cooling system, sprinklers, to keep them at a good uh, temperature rate. Because if it does get too hot, it will, it will affect reproduction. We had a really hot breeding season one September, and I think our reproduction rate went down about 25%, and a lot of people's that we talked to went about 25% down. So you want to make sure you can try to keep them cool if you need to, keep them warm when you need to. Um, don't want them get too cold or hot. Uh, this picture is actually from Purdue University They uh, in animal science. They created this cooling pad that is actually used in farrowing barns because farrowing barns are heated to about 80 degrees and a lactating sow is that's a, the opposite of you, what you want a lactating sow to be in. It's heated for the piglets so they get really hot and that becomes an issue with heat stress and this is something they've been using and been working on. It's been working really well. Feed quality, this is another big one that often gets overlooked. Make sure that all the nutrient requirements for a sow are met. Um, you wanna make sure your feed doesn't have any mold in it, have any, you know, try it, you can test for mycotoxin if you want. That's something that will really affect your reproduction. Uh, make
make sure all the sows are getting adequate amount of feed depending on your housing system. If they're in individual crates, that's not a big deal, but if they're in uh, group housing and you got a big boss sow knocking out the low man on the totem pole, it's, you want to make sure they're getting enough feed. So, because that will affect reproduction. Uh, make sure the grain, like I said, it's not moldy. And if it is moldy, you need to have that tested and make sure you don't use that on your pregnant or trying to get pregnant jobs. So housing systems, we kind of talked about housing systems. Um, these are a lot of different ones that you can use. Uh, usually the better ones cost the most. So it kind of depends on what you're trying to do, how big you are, how much you want to spend. But the, the basic things to keep in a good housing system to avoid reproduction problems is temperature, you want to keep them at a comfortable temperature, <clears throat> adequate ventilation, you want to keep that air moving, not stagnant. Um, uh, there's enough room for all the sows, make sure they can lay down easily, not touch another sow. There's an adequate amount of feeders, amount of waters for all the sows. Um, another thing to think about is boar exposure. If you can't get a boar and expose those pigs to boars, it's going to be hard to uh, indicate estrus when those pigs are in heat. So you want to look at that, make sure you have a place where a, a boar can run the gate um, and get those gilts sided. And then manure management, also not a big, a lot of people don't think about that, but you don't want them sitting in manure. That can cause a whole list of problems. So, so in aging herd health, obviously the older the sow gilts, usually her reproduction goes down, usually her health goes down. So you want to just look at your herd and see if there's any differences you notice, you know, mange, stuff like that. You want to take care of it and spread fast. Um, <coughs> so just make sure you also have uh, quality replacement gilts. If your herd's kind of an older herd, you want to be thinking about getting new gilts in there. And always examine your herd for any changes in behavior, health, and always consult with your veterinarian about that if you need to. Um, this picture kind of goes over like a just basic sow health, um, healthy bones and joints. If you're going to keep them for a long time, for six years, that's a long time for a pig. You want to make sure their joints and their bones are good, strong hooves. You have a lot of hoof problems in pigs, so you want to make sure they're good, they're even, they're straight, there's a good widespread within them. Uh, body condition, there's a one to five scale, you usually want them around a three. Definitely don't want a five or a one. That will cause reproduction issues on itself. Um, and then just health and immune system. You don't want to breed a sick sow or keep a sick sow that just keeps getting sick. So, yeah.